My paper is entitled The Ridden Horse Pain Ethogram. I am Sue Dyson. The initial part of the work was carried out whilst I was at the Animal Health Trust, but the later studies were carried out when I became an independent consultant. By way of background, an ethogram is a series of behaviours, each with strict definitions. For example, the ears being behind a vertical position for five seconds or more. The ridden horse pain ethogram comprises 24 behaviours, the majority of which are at least 10 times more likely to be seen in a horse with musculoskeletal pain than a non-lame horse. A ridden horse pain ethogram score of eight or more is highly likely to reflect the presence of musculoskeletal pain. The reduction in ridden horse pain ethogram scores after abolition of pain causing lameness by diagnostic anesthesia proves a causal relationship between pain and behaviour. This is a review paper which looks at why and how the ridden horse pain ethogram was developed, the methods of validation, and how to use the ridden horse pain ethogram. For example, the type and duration of work that should be observed, from where to observe the horse, how to understand the definitions of each behavior. It provides a checklist and recommends its use and outlines pre-assessment checks for example, assessment of the size of the horse's iris. It discusses studies which have been performed to investigate other factors that may influence ridden horse pain ethogram scores, including rider skill, rider size, the position of the rider in the saddle, saddle fit for the horse, and noseband type and fit. It also considers other factors which have to be taken into account when assessing a ridden horse, such as sweating and the pattern of respiration relative to work intensity, work duration, horse fitness, and the environmental temperature and humidity. Rain tension, the degree of rain tension and its symmetry, the presence or absence of grinding of the teeth, and observations of movement of the saddle. It discusses when to use the ridden horse pain ethogram. This is a very powerful tool that can be used in pre-purchase examinations. It has a place in routine health checks. Could performance potentially be improved if we recognize the presence of a subclinical problem? It can be used in poor performance assessment and when evaluating the appropriateness or otherwise of saddle fit to the horse. It can be used in conjunction with observation of lameness in the response to diagnostic anesthesia. It can also be used as a monitoring tool in order to assess the response to management of a known problem. And it also has a place for the education of owners about the presence of musculoskeletal pain. I would like to acknowledge the many people that were involved in the carrying out of the studies, both at the Animal Health Trust and elsewhere. I would particularly like to thank World Horse Welfare, who provided financial support for many parts of the study and also the Saddle Research Trust, who supported early preliminary studies.